guys, Marie here. Kids, it's time to do our life app. It's the time when you bring your grown-ups to talk about things that God can do inside of us to change the world around us. And today, we're talking about determination. Determination is sticking with things. Determination is deciding that it's worth it to finish what you started. I know that we're still sheltered in place, so I thought we would try some activities to stick things out at home. I'm calling this sticking at home with sticky stuff. Say that three times fast. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Yes. All right, one thing I've seen a lot of people do that's sticky is this cool sidewalk art. The truth is, I'm not that crafty. This is a little daunting for me. But you know, I love a good challenge, and today is all about determination. So step one is to place the tape on the sidewalk. sure stuck. Sometimes things can seem impossible, but a determined person decides it's worth it to finish what you started. So the first thing I need to do to keep going is to be bold. I finally got out of it. Sometimes things can seem impossible, but a determined person decides it's worth it to finish what you started. And we can remember that God is always with us. And when God says God is always with us, it means always. Remembering God is with you can help you stay determined when you are doing something that seems difficult. Just remember, keep going, and God is with you. Determination is deciding to stick with things and finish what you started. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Sticking at home with sticky stuff. Yes. To the right, here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Yes, I'm stuck in the middle with you. Well, hey everybody, welcome to Faith Trek on Sunday. You might have noticed that things are looking a little green, a little sticky, a little gooey. And that's because sometimes things get sticky, things get gooey, and when we get stuck, we need our life app, Determination, to help us out. Because Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. So the places where we get stuck, God can help us through. All right, we're going to play a little game all about sticky stuff. We played this on Wednesday. It's called Cotton Ball Shake. First thing you need to find is something sticky. This could be a little blob of Vaseline, some chapstick, or maybe some painter's tape. Whatever you find that's sticky, make sure you ask your parents permission before you stick it to your face. All right, so find your sticky thing and then find a cotton ball or a little balled up piece of toilet paper or maybe even just a little balled up piece of like scratch paper. That's what I've got. You want to stick it to your sticky thing. All right, now here's the challenge. Here's the cotton ball shake. In just a minute, we're going to sing a song. 
we are not we are going to dance wildly around the room and as we're doing that we're going to see if this can stick on the whole time all right so i'm going to teach you some actions and then we're going to see who can win the cotton ball shake here's how the actions to our song go they go like this okay you have to focus in because these won't be on the screen while you're playing and doing the song okay you go like this they go whoa oh 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 so it's a little fist pump and then a rainbow thingy i can't stop now the other side whoa oh oh, oh. i won't stop okay then we're going to do it again whoa oh oh i can't stop won't stop i never stop then we're going to do singing your praises hey hey okay the last part is singing your praises and then we're going to do a little hey hey fist pump all right let's try the whole thing whoa oh oh i can't stop whoa oh oh, oh i won't stop oh oh, oh, oh. Can't stop, won't stop, I'll never stop singing your praises. Hey, hey, singing your praises. Hey, hey. Okay, let's try out the song. Let's see who wins the cotton ball shake. Hey everybody, this is the Bible memory verse for the month of May. It goes like this. 
let us not become tired of doing good at the right time bing, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up that's from galatians 6 9 Hey there, I'm Lawson and we are celebrating 45 rockin' awesome episodes of this show. Do the confetti! No, no confetti. You know how much of a mess that is to clean up. But, but Mom, we've recorded 45 whole shows. Uh, 44. You've barely even started this one. <gasps> Uh, right, guess we to get started, to get finished, to celebrate. So today, we're celebrating my friend Tamir's sister, Kira, and how she just finished something big. Kira just found out about this amazing summer soccer camp, so she begs her parents to let her go. But it's kind of expensive, like super expensive, like super duper expensive. <laughs> Dad says the only way that Kira can go is if you pay for half of it yourself. And Kira says, pay for it with what? Because it's not like she's made of money. And mom says, I know a way you can earn the money. Their older neighbor, Mrs. Bonifante, can't get around so well anymore. And she needs some help spring cleaning her kitchen. Kira's like, go! Because how hard can it be to spiff up a few things for Mrs. Bonifante, right? Kira's neighbor says all Kira needs to do is throw out anything expired in the fridge or pantry. Especially if it's growing stuff. Then Kira needs to wash and put away all the dishes and scrub every kitchen surface. Then, Mrs. Bonifante pats Kira on the shoulder and says, Bless your heart, sweetie. And leaves Kira alone with the mess. The stuff in the fridge is so old, Kira's pretty sure there's something alive in there. But she takes a deep breath, and she grabs the first thing she sees. It looks like cheese. Green cheese, ooh, maybe from the moon. Five minutes in, she is ready to give up now. She tells herself, think soccer camp. So this time, she gives it all she's got. And in three hours and 57 minutes, she's finally done. Mrs. Bonifante shouts, go! And then she pays Kira for all her hard work. And Kira shouts, Go! Cause it's exactly the right amount for her to go to camp. Then mom and dad show up and they all pull out their vivazuvalivas to celebrate. <laughs> kids, remember, never do this at home, but do remember that determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Like episode 45. Ooh, can we celebrate with confetti now? Please, 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 please. Oh, awesome. What? It's better than more of a... Better than more of a... This. Right? Fine. But you gotta clean it up. Okay, okay. Bye guys! See you next time! Woo! It's time to do our Bible book wrap, and we have started the Old Testament. So let's review what we learned last week. Last week we learned... Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. 
This week, here's our new part. First Samuel, second Samuel, first Kings, second Kings, then read first and second Chronicles. Let's slow that way down and do it again. First Samuel, second Samuel, first Kings, second Kings, then read first and second Chronicles. Okay, let's try the whole thing up until what we learned. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st Samuel, 2nd Samuel, 1st Kings, 2nd Kings, then read 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Okay, let's try it with the video. The best books of the best book Cause all of God's songs have the best books And all of God's acts have the best looks And all of God's love's in the best book Yo, it's the B-I-B-L-E Read the B-I-B-L-E Know the B-I-B-L-E God's word is the B-I-B-L-E Top read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings Second Kings, then read First and Second Chronicles the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the books of Matthew, Luke, and Acts. When Jesus returned to life, roller coasters hadn't been invented yet. But as far as his friends were concerned, they might as well have been living on one wild coaster ride. Peter and Matthew might have gone over the whole story one more time as they walked the dusty roads from Galilee back towards Jerusalem. Remember how it started? Jesus does all these miracles. Thousands of people gathered to listen to him. And we hear God's voice saying, this is my son and I love him. But then he gets all those threats from the religious leaders. And he ignores them all and raises Lazarus to life. That lousy Judas betrays him. The religious leaders arrest him. And I run away like a fool. And Jesus is killed. But he comes back to life. And now we get to hang out with him. I think he's got big plans. Did you hear how he told me at the lake to take care of his followers? And what he said to us all on the mountain in Galilee. About making new disciples? Yeah. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Big job. How do you remember all this stuff? I record it. You should write a book sometime. I'm still not so sure about the Holy Spirit part. Same. But Jesus is here with us now. We can do anything while he stays with us. Forever! Ahead, Peter and Matthew and the other disciples could see Jerusalem in the distance, the temple rising above the other buildings. He said to meet him back in Jerusalem. For the Feast of Pentecost, probably. That would be the perfect time for him to do something big. If he wants followers in all nations, that must mean we take over Israel first, right? I don't know about the takeover part. As Jesus' friends returned to Jerusalem, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city, near Bethany. Nice view of the city from here. I bet he's finally going to give us all the big plan now. He already did. Make disciples of all nations. Yeah, but how? Is he going to gather 50,000 people at Pentecost? Or maybe he'll take us all with him on an epic road trip. He probably wouldn't have brought us all up here if he didn't have something big to say. Sure enough, as they ate a meal on the side of the hill, Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit thing again. Peter couldn't take it anymore. He had to ask. Lord, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? Everyone stopped talking, then looked to Peter, then to Jesus, who shook his head. You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria 
and you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. The disciples exchanged glances. Okay, you did say the all nations part already, but wh where will you be? And please, can you explain how the Holy Spirit's going to help us? As Jesus smiled at his friends, he lifted his hands and spoke a blessing over them. He's not answering the question. As Jesus was speaking, something incredible happened. Slowly, he began to rise into the air. He's standing in the air. How is he standing in the air? Jesus' friends stared, mouths open. Soon, a cloud hid him from view, but they continued to gape. Men of Galilee. The disciples blinked and finally looked down to discover two tall men dressed in white standing right beside them. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. Come back? Come back when? But the man in white were gone. He did say, don't be concerned about times or dates. But he just gave us the biggest job ever. Tell everyone in the whole world about him? There's gotta be a plan. The Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit is the plan. But we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. So, wait. That's the plan? That's the plan for now. Jesus gave his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. Share the story of Jesus and his love for every nation across the entire world. But soon, he gave them everything they needed to not only start the job, but keep going. So today's Bible story, it's all about determination, sticking with things. And here's the cool thing about today's story. Jesus gave his friends, the disciples, a big, big job. In fact, it might have created a lot of stress and anxiety, except for the one thing that Jesus promised his disciples, his friends. Jesus said, I'm going to be with you always. And that changes things. When God is with us, we can stick with things. We can do hard things. We can decide it's worth it to finish what we started because we know that we have God on our side. And because Jesus is alive, Jesus is with us too. And God's with us all the time. So whatever you need determination for this week, remember that God is always with you. All right, I hope you check out some of the activities that we have or join us on Zoom for some more fun on determination. And let's close in a word of prayer together. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we know we can trust you no matter what. You promise to be with us always. When situations in our lives seem impossible, help us to remember your promise. You are with us. Help us remember that even when things seem impossible, all things are possible for you. As we go through our week, give us strength not to grow tired of feeling good, of being kind, of being patient, and open our eyes to the times we can tell others about us. We love you, God. Amen. Okay, bye. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your prayer.